So we're going to talk about hydroponic vine crops now. There's four primary crops that people will use in hydroponic systems. There's tomatoes, bell peppers, eggplants, and cucumbers. You can experiment with others, but those are going to be your primary commercial uh, vine crops. There's multiple systems, as with everything else. We have a couple of different versions here. Again, we try to have a little bit of everything in here so everyone can see what's, what's what. The two primary commercial systems that people are going to use are either one, Dutch buckets, or two, what's called the gutter and slab system, and we have both. Vine crops want to be supported, especially when you're growing them inside of a greenhouse. So we're growing them on a trellis. All different ways to do it. Most people are going to use roller hooks um, and then clips that are going to attach the vine crop to the trellis. Tomatoes and cucumbers, you're primarily going to grow as a central leader where you're going to treat it as almost like a, a vine. Um, you don't want to allow the suckers to develop and, and vine out. You want them to grow up nice and straight. And by doing that, you're going to be able to get more tomatoes per square foot um, and then more fruit per square foot also. Um, the reason we don't use them in, in deep water is two reasons. Number one, they prefer to have a dry down period. Most vine crops do. They, they don't want to be suspended in the water all the time. And then also the trellising aspect, you need to be able to get access to your, to your vines pretty readily. So you need to have some, some walkway space uh, built in between. We use a method uh, called the lean and lower method, where you're going to grow them up the trellis. And as they reach the top of the trellis, you're going to either drop the, the vine head down and then slide each one to the side. But those are the two primary methods. And the way the systems work, you're going to have a separate reservoir of water. Um, and that's going to be where, just like with deep water or with the other systems, you're going to amend the water with nutrients and you're going to adjust the pH. You're going to want a little bit higher pH uh, for your vine crops. You know, you, you may start them out initially at around uh, 2.0 on your, on your EC. And then eventually you're going to want to go a little higher, probably around 2.4 to 2.6 on your electric conductivity um, as they get into the more fruit bearing stage. But anyway, you're going to have a small pump probably uh, that's going to feed each of the vines. It's going to pump your nutrient water to each of the vines. And it's just a very basic drip irrigation system. And the beauty part about these types of systems is they're recirculatory. So all of the extra water is going to be collected and then brought right back to the reservoir. So that way you're not wasting a single drop. And for that reason, I tell a lot of growers, even here in Texas, using these types of setups does offer a lot of advantages, even if you're not in a controlled environment. Of course, ideally, that's where you wanna be. You wanna be in a greenhouse if you can be um, with these vine crops. But even if you're outdoors, this is something that an outdoor grower could do. So. The vine crops are a little bit different than the leafy greens. The leafy greens, everything happens very quickly. You're going to have a crop about 40, 45 days after you plant the first seed for things like lettuce. Tomatoes in particular are going to take much longer. You're usually going to have a couple week period uh, in your incubation rack, and then you're going to probably bump it up into a, a, a larger size. Um, and that's going to take you a couple more weeks before you get good root development to go into a system. So typically for things like tomatoes, it may take 70 days before you're harvesting, depending on the variety, uh, 60 to 70 days before you get a crop. But once you do get them to fruition, um, if you're managing the crop right, they can last a long, long time. They do take some additional labor. It's probably at least a bi-weekly job for things like tomatoes that where you're going to be suckering and pruning and trellising, um, and it takes some time. So all that needs to be accounted for in your sales price and in your business. With ours, we normally keep our vines for around nine to 10 months for things like tomatoes and peppers. Cucumbers are gonna be around three, three and a half months. A lot of growers have told me that they notice when the vine gets to around 50 to 60 feet tall, long, the quality starts to diminish. The crop quality starts to diminish. So that's something to keep in mind also. 